All this work that we're doing, brothers, for this ministry, eventually is going to pay off. You better believe it, man. It's going to pay off like you'll never believe. Okay? And by the way, we're the highest value male on this planet. The men of the Lord. The men of this truth. The hopeful elect of Yahweh Barashim Shai. The highest value male there is. Mm. All right. Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Kakadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great examples to his younger brothers. And peace and blessing, salutation to the hopeful leg out there pushing his word and truth. And this series across the four winds in the name of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, pushing to get up out of here. Shalom to the hopeful leg, the believers, the listeners who have came back to the obedience, all right, of the scriptures through faith in Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. Okay, and what I want to do is respond to a lesson. You know, done by the elder brother Manata Zagba, all right, with his channel GMS South Carolina 08. All right, um, subscribe to the brother and be edified, okay? And this is a response to an argument, you know, um, something that was said about vocab as he's, you know, on all our quest, you know, to overthrow the faith of the church, okay, which he's. All right, not even a factor, okay, and what the Lord is doing in the earth, what he's doing amongst his people, all right, is to the point to where there's no need to go back and forth with this man about the same argument, okay? These are people that want to continue, vocal represents the continuation of Edomite supremacy in the earth, okay? And Israelite, the real Israelites, all right, uh, 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 oppression, <laughs> you see, so this man is not set for the defense against the gospel, okay, but to keep a system intact, okay, that attaches our people, all right, to, to, to a legacy of slavery, okay, Christianity is nothing but the, uh, an extension of the shackles of our captivity, man, and it's, and it's being destroyed, and the true believers are are way beyond the argument of vocab man okay if you uh so-called black latino native american and you're still beguiled by a vocab well it was set up okay for you to be destroyed within this system man okay at least you repent before you come out <laughs> all right before uh, at least you repent before the destruction comes man Okay, but it's a good chance in year 2024 if you're still, all right, uh, uh, being <laughs> wooed by the likes of someone like a vocab in Christianity. Okay, it's a good chance, man, that you're none of his. All right, but to just double down, okay, on the faith of the hopeful lick, we're going to go into these things. All right, so he makes the argument about the, um, the year 2000. And he says, well, you know, his whole thing is, well, if he was wrong about dealing with high priest Ariah, okay, which the spirit was dealing with him, you know, to come up with the chart, which we believe that by faith, which the brothers, you know, they mentioned it. Okay, we believe it by faith. Okay, there's a, there's a breakdown, okay, in the scriptures dealing with this chart, Genesis 49, all right, Deuteronomy 33, you know, the beloved brother, elder brother, elder Kazak. All right, you know, he has a few lessons on that breakdown where he goes into it. Okay, but through faith, all right, we believe this to be true. All right, and we don't need the approval, okay, of you devils, of nobody. <laughs> okay, we, you know, hey, the, the, the spirit bear witness, okay, of truth, man, and we believe. Okay, so. Let's um play this, you know, and we'll deal, all right, with, you know, this whole year 2000, which, you know, these things are scriptural, and the Lord allows certain things to happen, you know, for, for, for stumbling, okay? And the Lord causes certain scenarios to be set up to sift, you see? But this is a spiritual book, man, and, and non-spiritual men, okay, will have no understanding as the scriptures say 
Okay? Now, let's um play this and then we'll get into it. This says what that they trying to trouble us and do. Alright, this is what we're dealing with right now. Being trouble and building. Because all we're trying to do is speak and prophesy to our people to foretell them of these plagues that we're not done, alright, that's getting ready to come upon the earth, and we have others trying to counteract what we're doing. Pursuant to Philippians, the first chapter, line up, brought up 15 verse. Alright, some teach for envy and strife, alright, and contention, and some for goodwill. Alright? They, they teach for envy and strife, supposing to add affliction to our bonds. We're already in hell. They trying to give us more hell. But in reality, we're out here for our people. We don't give a damn who don't want to listen. I got one This chart came from a question. man who prophesied that Howard Shai was coming back in 1999. But he didn't statement. come back. So aren't you worried he's a false prophet? I'm going to add this too. Because that we're out here for our people. We don't give a damn who don't want to listen. I got one from This chart came question. from a man who prophesied that Howard Shai was coming back in 1999. But he didn't come back. So aren't you worried he's a false prophet? I'm going to add this too. Because they So let's deal with that in the scripture. Okay, and the whole year 2000, you know, was a doctrine taught by, you know, the one way school, you know, but since the apostles and the elders, you know, stayed within the doctrine, you know, it stuck, you know, they stayed within the faith. It's something that stuck with them, you know, and it's just an attempt to overthrow the faith. All right, because they wasn't the only ones teaching it. Okay. Which they always go into it, but you know, they try to use this to discredit, okay, the doctrine and the faith, <laughs> okay. But it, it, it's a failed attempt because these things can be explained in the scriptures, man. So let's go here to um, the book of um, Hosea, all right, chapter 6 and verse 2. It says, all right, I started at 1, it says, Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he have torn and he will heal us. He have smitten and he will bind us up. Okay. And when you go into our punishment because of our disobedience. You know the Lord allowed us to go into this last captivity. Under this devil Esau Edom. So from the time when the conquistadors came. Alright. And uh, conquered the northern tribe that was already over here in the Americas. Okay. To the time. Okay. Of um. The, the southern kingdom, all right, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, all right, being brought from, you know, Africa, you know, mainly the west coast, what they call the slave coast, the interiors, okay, and they was brought over here in the captivity and throughout other places, all right, during the transatlantic slave trade, there was the Lord tearing us, man, you know, because of our disobedience, <laughs> all right, but then the Lord allowed his word all right, beginning with Elder Abba Bivens, okay, which was um, Elijah coming back, all right, which that was a fulfillment of prophecy, okay, and we began to be healed by this word, trickling down to today, where we're still in the healing process, man, <laughs> all right, and this is what these devils hate, is us being healed, because no one complains about our people in the degenerate state. No one is making the uproar. No one is is, is, is traveling around to, to, to the ghettos and the projects and, you know, these corners. Okay, these drug infested neighborhoods complaining about the behavior of our people. Okay? But when it comes to us being healed by this word, it's an uproar. Okay? Showing you that these people are not for our turn. Okay? Beginning with these heathens. All right, mainly Esau eat him. Now, let's go here. It says, after two days, will he revive us? Okay. In the third day, he will raise us up and we and we shall live in his sight. Okay. So, let's go prophetically and get, go into what those days are. Because we have to understand those days are prophetic. All right. When you go to 2 Peter 3 and 8. It says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Okay, so those days represent a thousand years. Okay, so after two thousand years, okay, of Yahweh Shai being sacrificed, we will be revived within those two thousand years. You know? 
not after, but within those 2,000 years, man, we will be beginning to be revived. And that started to happen, okay, with Elder Albert Bivens going back to uh, uh, 1969, 1970, okay, as Yahweh Shah was being teached, and this word started to go out and heal, <laughs> okay? So that's prophecy fulfilled. And it says in the third day, we will live in his sight. Well, the apostle went into it as well. First of all, the calendar is so messed up, all right, that we don't even know exactly what year we in, okay? But when it says in the third day, we will be revived, all right, that can be uh, 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 one second within that third day or that third thousand year period. Okay, or 10 years within that uh, 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 third thousand year period, which we're in now. Okay, or we're close to it because we can't say exactly because of the year, but we know that we've been revived. So we know that, that we are in the in the um, second day for sure. But who's to say if the if the third day doesn't start? All right. Uh, 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 in the next few years or a year or two. But either way, within that third day. We will live in his sight eventually, man, because that's a whole thousand year period, which we know is not going to be another thousand years. We we close, man. OK, but this is the prophecy, you know, that, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the apostles, you know, and the men, you know, that taught them was going off of, man, dealing with this year 2000. OK, and when you get into it, you how was shy? All right, he goes into these things. When you go to Luke 12 and 37, all right, it says, Blessed are those servants. Wait a minute. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Okay, and the apostles, all right, they was watching. <laughs> you see? And the scriptures say there's a blessing for those that are watching, man. So them to have an expectation to see your Yahweh shot, that just means they was watching. Okay? Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down, all right, to meet and will serve, and says, and will come forth and serve them. And that's a great honor if a king serves you, you know? So basically, Yahweh Shai is saying that he's going to honor those men that are watching. Okay? You know, they're going to be highly honored, man. You at a feast and the king is serving you himself. Like, that's like the top honor you can have. <laughs> okay? So this, the, uh, this is Yahweh Shai, you know, a promising high honor to those, those men that are watching. Verse 38. And if he shall come in the second watch, okay, <laughs> or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants, all right? So you can liken that they was waiting for him in the second watch and he didn't come, but now we in that third watch, okay, in which we know he's coming, man. All right, it says, let's read this in the NLT, Luke 12 and 38. He says, he may come in the middle of the night or just before done. But whenever he comes, whenever he comes, he will reward the servants who are ready. And the apostles have stayed ready ever since. Watching, teaching, <laughs> warning, prophesying, building. Okay, so this is this is all spiritual, man. <laughs> you see, so let's go here in Luke the seventeenth chapter. All right, it wasn't like they were just on some. They just threw a random year out there. Nah, man, it was it was all prophecy, man. You how was shot? <laughs> okay, he touched on these things. This is Luke seventeen and twenty one. Neither shall they say low here. Or lo, therefore, behold, the kingdom of the Most High is within you. Okay? And it also goes to show that, hey, first of all, in 2000, 
Look how many brothers and sisters have came in since the year 2000. If it would have went down in the year 2000, okay, there was a lot of the elect that was still out there waiting to be awakened. Okay? And you have to understand this thing as we, you know, see in part and prophesy in part, things become clear as we get closer to the end. Oh, okay? But for the apostles to have that expectation, okay, going back to the year 2000, that wasn't off in the spirit. It was it was a calculated move by Yahweh Shai. And he, it's going to go into it. Verse um 22. And he said unto the disciples, the days will come. All right? And the disciples later became what? Apostles. Okay? <laughs> He that have ears, let him hear, man. It says, and he said unto the disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. Okay? The apostles desired to see Yahweh, and they didn't see it. So they fulfilled, okay, prophecy that was spoken by Yahweh himself. Okay, and the thing that gets me, not only do, you know, you had all these other men that was pushing that and teaching that, and it sticks to uh, only the apostles, but you had the whole earth in the uproar about the year 2000. Okay, you know, I think I was like in sixth grade, fifth grade, something like that, if I can remember, but... I remember people panic buying and all those things around that time, man. So this just wasn't no, you know, <laughs> matter of fact, I had to queue up a little video. All right. And this is from uh, the year 2000. But let's play a little bit of this, man, because people at, you know, everybody, you know, like I say, I didn't, you know, I was like fifth, sixth grade. So I didn't know the ins and outs. Okay. And information didn't travel as fast then. You know, but there was there was a panic surrounding this time, man. Okay, let's go here. Back into the dark ages, but at this time, I knew calls went through. The power stayed on, and we didn't go back into the dark ages. But at this time, on New Year's Eve of 1999, no one knew for sure what was going to happen with the Y2K bug. A line of computer code that could not recognize dates beyond 1999 sent many people into a panic 20 years ago. I spent three hours on the anchor desk that night as we waited for the new millennium to see if mayhem would arrive along with it. Metro Communications 911 will be the nerve center of Minnehaha County, and that's where we find Kettleman's Jessica Armstrong. Doug, everyone here is waiting for the same thing, the stroke of midnight. Survivalists stockpiled food and everyone waited to see what would shut down when the clock struck midnight in the new millennium. Many flights have been canceled here tonight and that's because of two reasons. First of all, people just didn't buy the tickets. 20 years ago, people relied on landline phones. The telephone company spent years and $275 million to prevent the glitch from taking out telephone service. The city of Sioux Falls even hired a Y2K planner, and 12 people worked for more than a year to prepare the city. We defined our worst case scenario in Sioux Falls as a, a 72 hour total blackout in the, uh, in the community. While the Y2K bug was real, officials were confident disaster had been averted months in advance. It was a, a lot of waiting and expecting that nothing was going to happen. Don Hill was the Sioux Falls fire chief at the time. Also really early in the day here, um, uh, the date had already changed in New Zealand. And so it was pretty clear that, that, that it wasn't going to be a big event. Just as Hill expected, the year 2000 was ushered in without major incident. Sioux Falls' Y2K war room was quiet New Year's Eve as the new century rolled over without any power outages or other major problems. Things get solidified in your memory. When you just go into, all right, the different, uh, you just look at these images, okay? You see, you know, fire, you know, behind that image. Um, you see this one, you know, you see a, um, a mushroom cloud, you know, behind this computer, okay? 
You see um, the day the world crashes, the end of the world. Okay, and they was pushing this, man. Can we fix the 2000 computer bug before it's too late? You know, and, you know, this was a whole thing. This whole Y2K. So, <laughs> you know, this, hey, you can tell, all right, if they in the spirit and they expecting you, I was shy, like the stage was set. <laughs> you know? So, and at the end of the day, uh, the apostles always going to a lot of people fell out. And that was really the play. <laughs> okay. Was to get clowns away. You know, who really weren't serious, man. Went back into the world, but our apostles stayed faithful. Okay? And and due to their faithfulness, right? Matter of fact, we end it here. Alright? Through faith. As the scriptures say, Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Let's read this in the NLT, Hebrews 11 and 2. Through their faith, all right, of the elders, the people of the days of old earned a good reputation. Okay, and our apostles and elders have a solid reputation in the spirit because of their faithfulness, even, you know, when uh, 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 they didn't get that desire of seeing Yahweh shot. Okay, they stayed the course. They continue watching as faithful servants. And now, all right, look at the fruits, you know, of those men's faith and patience, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim You know, so that's the point. You know, just wanted to touch on that. Okay, because they try to, you know, make that, all right, as an argument to de debunk our faith, man. But no, nah, man, it ties in to everything that we believe, man. Okay, nothing can work against the truth before it. Alright? So till next time I say Shalom. A Bible ball soon.